also uh the today's talk will be an interesting topic where in which uh we are we'll be looking at how we have used uh python uh, specifically geospatial python libraries uh for addressing uh hazard risk uh situations such as flood uh heat wave as well as earthquake this specific uh, presentation will be with respect to the flood analytics model that we have created most of the libraries and uh you know the processes are python workflows uh, there will be some uh, you know interesting code bases that i would like to share with you and the results that i would like to share with you uh if time permits i will skim through code in detailed manner otherwise i will uh, just skim through it so having said that a little bit about me i currently work as a geospatial data scientist at gramina i have been working into geospatial data science field since like past 4 years uh i have worked on different different projects under microsoft ai for earth uh, as well as uh, various projects under smart city analytics as well as disaster risk management so uh, these are my like uh, different different profiles if anyone wants to reach out and connect with uh, on the different different types of topics that you might be working on please feel free to reach out now let's talk about uh flood right so flood being hit in uh, india and devastated many lives together uh and it has been a recurrent event for different like time spans uh as you as you can see this particular lady uh she had a you know a great story to tell that how they survived in such kind of cyclone induced floods uh moreover like there were like 1500 uh, uh deaths in india like considering the time stream between 2011 to 2020 now some few more facts about the cyclone induced floods uh like there are uh, various different different parts through which india is visible to the sea coasts there will be many other countries who are facing the similar problems so whenever the cyclone hits it creates a cyclone induced uh heavy rainfalls and ultimately creating a huge uh, floods in this particular situations the problem is is there any identification mechanism that we get to know these areas will be flooded and we can do rescue evacuation operations beforehand before we like whenever we get to know uh, an alarm that there is there will be a cyclone and there could be a cyclone induced flood we should know which houses to rescue first which are the houses which can get into flood first uh these particular uh, things are very uh, you know difficult to do while doing it physically there was physically you cannot see each and every house the best way to do it with respect to the satellite images and in an automated way such that you get to know exact insight about each and every house and what type of risk level they are at considering the different different parameters now uh, for such kind of situation what we thought right uh, is there should be an intelligent system uh, which can you know control the loss of lives and destruction to properties and we can do proactive uh, measures for that so if we get to know on the basis of topography of the house previous events uh, what is the uh, roof type of the house uh, is that house uh, is at very low elevation level the house is uh, you know towards like very impervious surface area where water cannot percolate considering these particular problems if we can make an intelligent system which can uh, avoid such kind of losses help disaster communities to work faster towards you know recovery of the processes thinking in mind uh, we came up with a solution that can give a uh, house whole level risk scores to each and every house so basically we are assigning a risk score to the house by using satellite imageries different different data sets and using python for all of this workflow together now there were different different data sets which are involved now this system so for any particular system to be able to run well as a model particularly uh, will be uh, having uh, different data sets so unlike other normal machine learning kind of algorithms where you play with one kind of data set which is say a csv data set or data frame or excel 
or one kind of imagery format geospatial technology differs the most geospatial technology comes with n number of different types of data set as you can see here so we need to take care about if there are any water bodies present what is the digital elevation model which talks about topography of the surface we also have to have high resolution satellite imageries uh, which can help us to identify where are those those exactly building footprints and how are they separated from each other uh, we also need to know what are the uh, ocean boundaries and how they rise and uh, go back over the period of uh, you know last 10 years data set we also need to know if there are any road networks uh, street networks through which people can be evacuated and the last and you know one of the most important one is uh, one of the uh, since like satellite data which is known as landsat data set which helps us to calculate uh, different types of indices which includes if there is any particular vegetation and that can be extracted if there is any particular kind of a uh, water body and if there are any impervious surfaces for all of those particular processing calculations we can use landsat data set so these were pretty like main components of the overall data set that we have figured out now uh, how we modeled it so just don't get uh, you know emphasized with all of this solution all together i will create uh, I, have, i will have a simple flow uh, which tells what exactly modeling that we are doing this flow particularly talks about the entire application towards the end wherein which i will just skim through two three main things which is high resolution satellite imagery is the different parameters that i told you and if there are any ancillary and data sets and ground truthing what we generally do is do data enrichment uh, you know bring it to a deep learning special format level assign the classification scores run the ai model on that and pull out the results in the format of geojson or household level risk which I, i will show in the application format as well now this is a simple process for so for example uh, if you have a road network a building footprint as well as the digital elevation model slope of that particular area or uh, impervious surfaces vegetation we bring that all together into a system called as multi criteria decision making so what do we generally do is on the basis of uh, vetages we assign uh, a risk scores to each and every particular parameter that has been used here so for example closeness to water body is more dangerous than closeness to road so that becomes a uh, road has less wettage than water body so just like that we had assigned different different wettages to different input parameters and created a multi criteria decision making which is also known as like which has also a sub part as analytical hierarchy process so we give hierarchical weights and it gives us a particular constant ratio so there is one term called as consistency ratio for all of these particular input models the consistency ratio should be less than 10% and fortunately all of these particular uh, input weight models that we have created falls into that particular category which can give us like household level uh, risk scores like this as well as what are the parameters in terms of raster data set or the imagery format because most of the data set is in image some of the data set is in into a raster imagery format now let's take a quick look at results and i will skim you through the python snippets of the code that we have looked at so consider for building footprint extraction we wanted to know you know take a high resolution imagery that can help us identify where are the building footprints and what is the type of the building that it is when i say type of the building it's just the roof type of the building because the in countries like india and all that there will be different roof types present all across different geographies based on uh, you know the seasons in that particular area if there are some areas where summer is more they will have different types of roofing if there there are areas where cold is more they have different types of roofing. so we wanted to include different different types of roofing we included uh, around like more than 10 to 12 roof type and then we identified the building footprints for that particular area so this is normal satellite imagery and how uh, one of the like deep learning model 
classifies this particular imagery. Now, these use of like our deep learning model creates polygon across like each and every particular building. It has a certain accuracy, which I will share it with you in the next slide. Now, this is one of the example. I will show the live demo of this also. But say, uh, this is the live example of the final application where in which you get to see which are the houses which are in higher risk score, what is the risk score level for that particular house, and what is the area of the house. The label is just an encoded label of the house type which I mentioned. So like we have a publication of this particular current solution uh, right now. Uh, you can, uh, I will share these links if needed into the chat box. Uh, but let's move on to the coding part because that's one of the more interesting part right now. So the coding part um, involves like four main steps and fifth as a larger part. So four main steps involves uh, creating tiles. Like for example, when we have a satellite imagery, those imageries are kind of big in terms of size, in terms of area as well, because we are talking about a city level imagery. Now these particular images needs to be classified into different different image chips. We converted it into Pi 12 by Pi 12 chips. Now, on that particular basis, we created a model which identifies like segments the building footprints and simplifies it. So whenever the building footprint is created, generally the shape is not good. So there are a lot of nodes which are coming around the edges. We need to smoothen the edges and give you know normalized age related um, buildings. So building will have some, uh, instead of smooth edges, it will have, you know, tiny edges altogether. So we wanted to simplify those geometries. Lastly, when we have building footprints, we classify them into 10 to 15 classes that we have. And towards the end, once we have this building footprint data set ready, we merge it with the last step, which has all the other data sets, which, which were mentioned and clubs them all together to find a, uh, flood level risk at that particular house. Now let's move on to these particular notebooks one by one. Uh, and these particular notebooks, I can share a link with you and or across uh, the team over here. Cool. Now, as I said, the first step is to create the tiles. So what do we generally do is we feed the input to the model and we give what is the size that we require just to break that particular image into number of chips. When the chips are getting converted, we are saving each and every, uh, each and every image which is created out of tip and writing it to a specific location. That's the only thing that this particular notebook creates. All of these particular notebooks uh, are run sequentially as an orchestration part so that whenever a new city part comes, we can run this notebook one after the other automatically and get the results out. Now, once we have the building footprints uh, created with us, what we do is this goes into more of a deep learning model or machine learning part. I will, will not go more deep into that. I will focus on more of the Python related part right now. But here, what we have done is we have used efficient B6 model just to create uh, the building footprints. Um, just a second. I hope the screen is visible right now. Yes. Now, one. Since we have like already trained model models on different different building footprints, we have also used some of the Kaggle examples from SpaceNet as well as like uh, from the areas like Rio de Janeiro, which is kind of similar to Indian uh, related houses. And we trained we trained a transfer learning model on that. This notebook represents how to use that particular uh, model created and apply as a checkpoints for the building segmentation part. These particular checkpoints are, you know, run on different different uh, images that were created as a part of tiles, like image chips. And we are running it through the number of tiles. And whatever the number of tiles, uh, which is, you know, uh, it is uh, running on, it will show which tile it is showing. So that we get to know 
how much training is complete how much prediction is completed on that there is a trick to this what we had to do was uh, one of the important thing is one of the important thing is uh, since there are lot of building footprints which are agglomerated to each other we need to adjust the zoom level of the imageries so we scale up and scale down the imageries as per needed so that was one of the key learning part because uh, if there are lot of buildings all together the model was not uh, you know working well on that and was creating a whole bunch of houses together as one block we didn't want it to do that so we need to have a separated buildings for which we applied zooming in and zooming out section which takes into account this particular area where you can see that particular image clearly now moving on to the next part like we have also created inception v3 model for classification of these particular roof types again we feed uh, our images for the reclassification purpose one by one and after we are done with that we have since these particular images are into the geo tiff formats they are assigned with a geo key for each and every pixel we again assign them the output to 4326 like geographic information system and output that is generated is into geojson format it's just like the json format but with the geo keys attached to it so whatever the classified outputs that we get from the image we are simply converting it into json format now here comes the last step where in which we are doing all the hassle together so in flood risk modeling seems like a problem just a second okay cool so in flood risk modeling what's the main thing that we are attempting to do is to get all of this data together uh, and form a particular equation uh, which can give us a risk score as analytical hierarchy process so what are we basically trying to do is whatever the data that has been saved into this output models we are taking the boundary of the region for which we want to uh, run this particular model on to just to get and uh, clip our satellite imagery to these particular extents now once we have set uh, these particular geojson boundaries for those boundaries we use overpass api just to you know extract the water bodies as well as roads layers uh, which in turn are given with uh, proximity scores so what is what does it mean by proximity scores we convert these data sets into raster format like the vector data set into image format and we assign distance threshold so if there is a water body farther the house lesser the risk from the uh, you know from the water body filling out and spreading all over so this kind of simple uh, technique is used for proximity analysis so we had created distances layer which looks something like this so see once this is a water body that we have we created different different types of buffers around this so as to get which are those areas which are under high impact so these uh, particular distances were taken into account through different different research papers that has been uh, through and the ground reality is present now once we do this we also calculate what is the elevation in that particular area so this is one of the region in puri which is near to the sea level if you can see and uh, this gives us a uh, topographic wetness index which means which areas will be uh, you know relatively get wet faster and remain wet for the longer period of time based on digital elevation model it takes into consideration up slope and down slope modeling now once we have all of this what we do is uh, we calculate the landsat satellites different different indices which can give us uh, vegetation uh, as well as water bodies and if there is any built up present all of that that might look like like i will just skim you through that so this is example of the built up index so whatever the lighter color that you see apart from water body is kind of you know converted into say built up areas mostly now 
we can just extract those core impervious surfaces as well and we can assign landslide risk score if there are any landslide risk that might happen due to heavy rainfall so considering all of this we now bring of the data footprints to the model what what it takes into consideration is whatever the classified footprints that we have created which has a uh, label of the house like what particular building footprint that is and the geometry which tells what is the area of the house we convert that into raster again and we feed it to with respect to the other images that we have so combinedly we create a threshold level score so for example if a particular uh, house is within uh, 75 uh, meters of uh, water body it has higher risk higher the risk higher the value so 1 2 3 4 5 means 5 has a higher value 1 has a lower value similarly we do it for all the layers that has been taken into consideration now once we have all of this we create a particular ahp framework like analytical hierarchy framework which crops the image unnecessary parts of images and gives us uh, the exact uh, building footprint related raster part before that you can see the weightages which are given so we have given more weightages to like building footprint areas because we want to know what is the risk to that particular house followed by building footprint uh, area and then followed by different different parameters topographic witness index also being one of the main parameter now there will be some parts which are not available, like which are not closer to sea uh, so in that we are not considering the ocean part so that's the only difference between these two now once we have this we get such kind of areas which gives us the risk score and then we assign um, our risk score labels on the top of that now since we have a very less amount of time right now i will just quickly shift to say one of the areas in um, down south which is in kerala india if you see like there is a uh, ocean present over here and there are a lot of houses this particular part was eventually uh, you know uh, impacted due to one of the hazard known as cyclone nivar and then before that we happen to you know model the risk score for this particular um, area which is if you see is uh, you know uh, hidden into different different vegetation parts as well as it's a remote area since it does not have too much agglomeration of the buildings it is still trying to identify most of the houses and assign a risk score to that particular house uh the risk score assigned is also uh, dependent upon the roof type so if there are any tarpaulin related roofs or cgi roofs will be at higher risk because cyclone induced flood comes with heavy uh, winds and all that we don't have on ground level wind data so that's why we have considered roof type as one of the major um, proxy to that so this is how it looks you can select any of the particular risk level that you want to see and those will be only highlighted so um yeah so this is much of it from my side uh let me know if you have any particular questions as such um i will stop the screen sharing right now or if anyone wants to know anything in detail from the particular slide let me know so if someone has a question uh, can come right to the microphone or I, i wanted to ask a question uh, i will take my privilege as a session chair and um, are uh, because i'm not so uh, apologies for my ignorance i'm not so uh, i don't know so much about um, uh, the way and technology but i wanted to know if there are um, if you can describe some real case uh, scenarios that uh, uh, the ai was used to prevent or to to save actually lives yeah definitely so uh, this particular uh, model actually helped like so this we have deployed it as a uh, you know real time model on for a particular ngo organization in india the industries uh, we like there was one of the cyclone which came and hit across uh, east ocean of india uh, during which since they already had these particular houses which they can evacuate uh, it was a good case with them that 
they helped to save at least like 100 and 117 lives in that particular city area so that's one of the example this application has been built recently right now that will be used over the period of time and we want to increase the number of cities on which this has been applied to so we slowly want to you know cover most of india's part and towards the sea coastline as a first priority uh, and the second question as uh, to continue uh, this is uh, do you uh, think of uh, some obstacles some uh, blocking things that uh, they will not allow uh, this technology to expand to, to, to increase the, uh, its usage for example in india uh, i couldn't hear the question clearly so you, you mean to say are there any ob- obstacles which can prevent the cyclone is it yeah 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 exactly yeah so one of the main obstacles for these particular areas are generally hilly regions as i know uh, but uh, these particular cyclones since being in the ocean itself it has impact uh, it his it's the cyclone does not greatly turn into uh, you know land part usually but it has impact on the land in terms of rain which is heavy rainfall uh, and that rainfall is something which is uh, anomaly event for that particular area it does not happen like usually in every monsoon but whenever that cyclone hits as a impact of cyclone it rains heavily due to the motions in ocean so that's the one of the thing so it doesn't have any particular specific uh, pillar or anything or a boundary to which we can stop the cyclone i hope that uh, i got your question right well yeah thank you very much and thank you very much for your presentation Ah, we have one more question. Oh, yeah. Hi, first of all, thank you for your talk. Uh, I, I was wondering, in a variable, your weight dictionary risk, uh, the parameters were hard-coded to weights. How did you t- determine the, uh, yeah, the, the values of the, these risk parameters? Yeah, definitely. So for this particular parameters, what we had been through uh, is different, different types of research papers. And we had been to these disaster management authorities. Uh, they have certain kind of guidelines for that. And we also had priorities. Like, for example, uh, as I told you, like water body should have more priority or uh, the nearby roads, which are impervious on which water can cannot directly percolate, but flows around all over the city is important. So based on the guidance from these particular technicians, as well as the research holders, we came up to a particular risk matrix, which is generic in terms of coastal regions. So that's why they were kind of hard coded. Again, we are also included the config file, which can be you know changed with respect to uh, different different areas as we want. Great, cheers. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you uh, very much. Any more questions? Bye. Yes. Yeah, bye.